This is Pat Sharp. I'm the best Pat there was, the best Pat there is, and the best Pat there ever will be. If you love wrestling, then keep listening. But please, don't try anything you're about to hear, especially the comedy. And if you're not down with that, I've got one move for you. The Pat Sharp Shooter. Hello, wrestling fans around the world. I'm your host, Damien St. John. This is Wrestling with the Champ. And he The is... time for talking is over. I hope not. This is a podcast. <clears throat> He is over the 34-time Pub Wrestling Federation champion, the Ginger Ninja. I want to see a smoky entrance. It's not that kind of podcast. I need to be more mysterious. Why? Women love mystery. Well, they love a man who showers. Have you tried that? I wrote a riddle. This isn't a poetry slam. It's just a slam. It's Halloween. Okay. Two wrestlers have a fight in the doctor's waiting room. What do you call it? Well, let's save the answer until the end. Give people a really juicy reason to keep... A coffin match. (sighs) Roll the eye, Dent. You're wrestling with the champ. Now I know you're off your rocker. Champ, I'd love it if you could share with me your proudest moment in the Pub Wrestling Federation. Oh, I'd love to help, but... But? I took over 300 chair shots in my career. My brain is like a peanut rattling around in a washing machine. My memory shot. Pew, pew, pew. Oh, well, how can I interview you if you don't remember anything? You've got your work cut out there, lad. OK, well, let me try and jog your memory. Uh, you saved the PWF, it was then the PWE, from bankruptcy when you created the infamous Mixed Gender Battle Royal Tournament. I did. God, I'm good. Let's take you back to 2003 for... The Royal Fumble. Now, the Royal Fumble made more money than any other event in PWF history at just shy of £900. Back then, the PWE was in deep trouble. Attendances were down, revenue was down, morale was down. If you say so. I never had any morals. It was the classic example of a wrestling organisation in crisis. Their bitter rivals, the Leisure Centre League, were riding high. It was do or die for a company that started life inside a tiny Blackpool seafront chip shop back in 1974. I've got nothing. All right, well, I mean, how about this? Hello, everyone, this is Chief Kegwin with a big hello to everyone here at O'Neill's in Colchester. Are you ready to wrestle? Oh, shit. I can't hear you. Well, hang on, is, is there anyone there? Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, hold on to your spandex. Here comes your main event. It's the 2003, I don't know why I put the date in, Royal Fumble. That rings a bell. <laughs> Let's get our first guest on. He was the owner of the PWF at the time. Please welcome to Wrestling With The Champ, the Welsh werewolf. It's Howl. All right, boys, how's it going? Good, thanks, Howl, and thank you for joining us on Wrestling With The Champ. Oh, my pleasure. I am getting paid for this, though, right? Hey, if he's getting paid, so am I. Right, nobody's getting paid. Not even I'm getting paid. It's a podcast. Everyone works for free on podcasts. Hal, tell me about the origins of the Royal Fumble. In the shower room. Not the boardroom. (laughs) God, no. The boardroom's where all the decisions get signed off, but they're made in the shower room. So you're both in the shower, then what? Right, I was waiting for the feet to kick in so I could wash my back hair off, right? When this donut walks in and shouts, Fumble! <laughs> uh. Well, I grabbed all of my crown jewels quicker than you can say Llewell in the librarian from Llanelli has licked my toads. Uh, actually, it's, I think you'll find it's pronounced Lanuli. And of course, Royal Fumble is a play on the Royal Rumble. Huh? What's that? Hang on. The Royal Rumble. Huh? The Royal Rumble. <laughs> well, it can't be that famous. I've never heard of it. Sounds like what happens when the Queen farts. It's only the most high-profile battle royale in the history of professional wrestling. How can I, neither of you know that? Well, I mean, I breathe air, but I don't bloody well know how oxygen works. All right, let's move on. Uh, what was so unique about the Royal Fumble compared to your regular events? It was inside a nine-sided ring. Nonagon. No, she's still here. And how, how many wrestlers took part in the Royal Fumble? Oh, um, hang on. Um, one, two, three, four, eighty-two. Did the PWF even have eighty-two on the roster? Did they bollocks? Anyone who paid twenty quid or signed a waiver got a number. 
so you must have made a few quid there. Do I have to answer that one? Following the success of the Royal Fumble, you sold the PWF to the owners of a local supermarket chain. Ah, Is that right? Yeah, that's right. To face value. Never knowingly overpriced. (laughs) Hal, thank you again for being on the podcast. I I know time is short. Thank you. Uh, Just finally, how is life after wrestling? I can't complain. That's good. No, legally I can't complain. Terms of the contract, see? OK, well, uh, let's leave it there. Nobody in this room can afford a solicitor. Thank you for joining us on Wrestling with the Champ, the Welsh werewolf, Howl. Owl! Owl! <laughs> Owl! <laughs> Great. Thanks again, Howl. Champ. What? Next, I'll be finding out how much you remember about the other entrance in the Royal Fumble. Oh, this bit's going to be shit, isn't it? How's this going to work without your memory? <sighs> All right, get me a pint of vodka, dirt, a ham sandwich and a blindfold. What's the blindfold for? You don't want to see what I'm about to do. Where's the best place to get Pub Wrestling Federation t-shirts? Grapple Max. Ho, ho, ho! Order your favourite Pub Wrestling Federation t-shirts from Grapple Max. Tees that make you go, hmm! In sizes up to 10XL. Shrinkage will occur after washing. Try not to wash. <laughs> All your favourite people are now in stock. Another Neville, Tag Team Twins, Lady and Lady, Filthy Rich Granny, Post Office Wanker, even Steve the Priest. Where's the best place to get Pub Wrestling Federation t-shirts? Oh my! Grapple Max! Feeling randy and savage? What a lucky person. You're wrestling with the champ. Champ, inside this tumbler are the names of the other 81 entrants in the Royal Fumble. Uh, Reach in, grab a ball, and tell me what you remember about that wrestler. Hey, these aren't balls. They're dishwasher tablets. I mean, you don't have to mention that. Theatre of the mind. But, yeah, we don't have the budget for balls as well, all right? How do I know which way up the number is? What's the number? Eleven. Eleven was... Let's have a look. Uh, The Glennon Black. Let's get him up. Hang on. I've got a thing here. Here we go. Joining us now via technology, number 11 in the Royal Fumble, the Glen in Black. Hello, boys. Glen, how are you? Yeah, good, good. Listen, you do know that Glen's not my real name, don't you? And what's your real name? It's Ben. Then why didn't you call yourself the Ben in Black? Oh, yeah. Huh. Glenn, Ben, it's great to have you on, mate. Uh, Tell me what you remember about your time in the Royal Fumble. Oh, it was one of the greatest nights in my pub wrestling federation career. And how many matches were in that glittering career? Nine. But it was a good one. And what made it so great? Oh, everything. The catering, the booze. The quality of your opponents, like this man here. And that, unforgettable. Who else did you square off against? I was in the ring with a couple of blokes. The Legion of Poon. And this woman, a nun she was. Holy Gale. The crowd were popping for everything. I didn't want to exit the ring that night, but I knew I was next out. Glenn, let's get serious. I'm, I'm sure you're aware by now that your signature move, Don't Look Black in Anger, has since been banned by the PWF. I get it. Not everyone wants their head rotated 180 degrees. Some people can handle the pain, some can't. It's a question I ask all the stars on Wrestling with the Champ. How did you come up with the name for Don't Look Black in Anger? It was on the radio when I came up with the move. Yeah, one song later, and my finisher would have been called Folding Back the Ears. You you didn't get a chance... Oh, where's he... Hang on. Look, I'm out of credit. It says no credit. Champ, you said your mate sorted me out with unlimited credit for this thing. He did? So what the bloody hell's going on? Chill out, will you? I'll text him. Well, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's my VPN. To be fair, I can't see your knickers. What brand are you wearing? That, that is literally the worst segment we've ever done. Nothing else can go wrong with this podcast. Oh, I've got no signal. Hey, what if we're dead? We could be. <laughs> I doubt if that. If this was our coffin, how would we know? It's roomy. See, coffins don't usually waste this kind of space. You're kind of packed in really tightly. What, what if the internet's down because a global apocalypse has kicked off? Is that what you think of every time a web page won't load? Straight to zombie apocalypse? <laughs> of course not. I, I, I just carry around this nail-studded baseball bat for fun. That's all. Look, we're going to need another topic to fill until the internet comes back on or the credit or, I don't know. D- um, go on, anything. I, I, ask me about my acting work. Have you done any acting work? Yeah, telly and movies. Right then, what roles have you played? Corrie, Manning Carr. 
Emmerdale, Man in Phone Box, Ad for Neto, Man in Q. Oh, and I'm trying to get a film I've written financed. And what's that called? Trouble in Clitheroe. Have you been drinking? I call it fizzy rehydrating. Right, well, who and who will star in that? Well, me, obviously. And who's your co-star? Megan Fox. What kind of movie is it? One with lots of kissing. So it's a romantic film? No, too cliché. It's a historic sci-fi adventure comedy or a blockbuster. Yeah, it's the first of three films. You've heard, you've heard of the Ice Cream Trilogy? You mean the Cornetto Trilogy, don't you? I, I, I didn't think we could mention brand names. Yeah, it's fine. We're not... Don't need to be precious about that. In that case, I would love a Kia Picanto. I mean, you can't ask for free stuff. I would not, repeat not, like a Kia Picanto. I would. And anyway, of all the cars... The second film's called Trouble in Preston. And the final film will be called... And I've spent a good chunk of time thinking about this. Trouble in Blackpool. Well, I wish you the best of luck with your ice cream trilogy. W- w- Want to do a read-through? N- uh, no, really I don't. Hit the music! Jack! Jack! Those alien buggers are rampaging through Clitheroe High Street and are about to destroy Greg's! What are we going to do? Don't worry, love. One push at this button and they'll get blown to shit. Uh, We're going to go to another break. Come on. Uh, Even this won't load. Wait, wait. This bit's good. Is it? What about us? I thought you'd never ask. Baby, we're toast. The good toast, but in a bad way. Should we have sex? We're back after this. This is an important message from the PWF. We know a lot of you are missing us right now. That unforgettable buzz that comes from being in a crowd at a pub wrestling federation live event can be addictive. Like you, we're wondering what will happen after this period of uncertainty. But rest assured, when pub doors reopen, we'll be back wrestling in our favourite places quicker than you can say Kendo Nagasaki crashed his Crimson Kawasaki. The Trout and Merkin, Mouldy Gorilla's Glory Box, The Purple Emu, The Wharf on Dogs, The Three Hole Pie, and who could forget, Claire's. Keep your tights handy, your masks close, your cardboard signs poised, and your non-lethal weapons sharpened. The Pub Wrestling Federation will be back soon. Thank you. Wrestling with the champ. Sometimes you wear stretchy pants. In the 2003 Royal Fumble, the future of the PWF hangs in the balance. Champ, you were drawn as entrant number one. Actually, I asked to be first. Why? That's a lot of work to go through. Imagine 82 wrestlers waiting in a tiny bin room. Fuck that. You went on to wrestle a lot of new talent that night. Prince Flip, Queenie Lizard Breath, Triple HRH, Princess Di Wrangler and Princess Margarita all made their debuts at the Royal Fumble. We loved the theme back then. And unbelievably, you were still there when the final entrant walked out. Technically, number 82 never made it in to the ring. Oh, what do you mean? Number 82 was Mad Mike. His thing was surprising people. So he hid under the ring before the whole thing started. Well, how long was he under there for? Two and a half days. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, like, why didn't he come out? Was he dead? Yeah. But we managed to bring him back to life with a packet of scampi. Top tip, if you ever find yourself without smelling salts, don't use actual scampi, because the packet stuff packs more of a punch. It's, it's like the Febreze of the snack world. And there's, champ, there's one key entrant in the Royal Fumble that we haven't talked about yet. Not Mohammed the Catholic. Gene McQueen, a.k.a. the Meanie Genie. I mean, you two, it's fair to say, were the hottest mixed tag team in the PWF for nearly eight weeks. The two of you, your title win at Coventry's Concrete King presents SummerSlam was the stuff of legend. Then people still rave about how you saved her from taking a stray breeze block to the face. It were nothing. Yeah, you spent three months in traction. For love, I'd spend six. So what uh, what did happen between the two of you? Don't ask me. Uh, Ask her. Okay, uh, well... Please welcome to Wrestling with a Champ, your old lady partner. It's Jean McQueen, the meanie genie. What have you got to say for yourself? Jean, how are you? I, I, I miss you. I miss us. Ah, shut up, would you? Are you going to apologise or not? What happened between you two at the Royal Fumble? 
there was three of us left in the ring, right? Me, him, and some weirdo in a teddy bear onesie. Bedtime Tim, yeah. I was supposed to kick Tim in the head. He'd stagger about, then I'd spring off the ropes and use a double flying elbow known as the man smash to send them both over the top rope. And then? Ugh, no, I, I can't. I'm still raging. Champ? <laughs> Don't call him that. His name's Nigel. It felt like the right time to propose. During a goddamn match? Jean, when I saw you leap into the air with your elbow pointing at my brain, I knew it were love. I deserved to win that match. Me, not you. So the two of you were tagging outside of the ring as well? N no. Yep. It wasn't romance. So was it more of a locker room liaison? W call it what you want. I want an apology. I, I don't regret asking you, Jean. No, no, not good enough. Not after this long. I still love you. Sounds like there's still plenty of heat between the two of you. And great tag teams thrive off this kind of conflict. Jean, uh, is there any chance of even an in-ring reunion? Absolutely not. Jean, you left the PWF shortly after the Royal Fumble and never wrestled again. The rest really is wrestling history. The Ginger Ninja went on to win the Royal Fumble and 34 titles as the PWF champion. But, I mean, it could have all been so different. Uh, what's your life like now, Jean? What are you up to? I, I, I work in financial services. Cool. Uh, any interest in podcast sponsorship? None whatsoever. Come on. Let's get back in the ring for all time's sake. Genie, genie, genie. Demo, join in. Genie, 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 genie. You can have top billing. Why wouldn't I get top billing? You know something? You haven't changed a bit. Thank you. Let's make this clear. The pair of you idiots can go and f*** Not again. We'll never know what she wanted to say. The internet services for this podcast are provided by Reliable Rick's Net Shop. All the reliability you've come to expect from me, Rick, in my net shop. You're wrestling with the champ. Well, champ, I guess the one that got away, got away again. Aye, she was the salt to me vinegar, the pickle to my cheese, the prawn to my cock. Cocktail? Oh, don't mind if I do. Uh, just some bits of housekeeping on the Royal Fumble. Uh, most eliminations, Tyler from the Legion of Poon with six. Most close escapes went to Dawn from Eagles Property Services at 15. Uh, and obviously, you had the longest time in the ring. The shortest time in the ring at just three seconds. Well, that dubious honour went to the 24-carat baby. Do you know what? I'm still finding flecks of gold paint in my cracks. Wrestling with a Champ was created by Damien St. John, written and produced by Ant McGinley and Damien St. John. Starring Ant McGinley, Damien St. John, Jason Webster, Paul Jones, Ash Frith, Lindsay Sakura, and actual Pat Sharp. For more episodes, search Wrestling with a Champ wherever you get your podcasts. You can also listen at champpod.com. Until next time, Champaholics. Is that your new catchphrase? Could be. It's between that or put your money where my mouth is. <laughs> <laughs>